What's good? We're back in this thing. Today, we got the super fire transition. It's not that hard to do. It's going to be pretty quick and simple, and we're going to be using After Effects. If you're new here, what's good? My name is Brian. I make music video tutorials here on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. Also, if you want to save some time while editing, as well as get some cool and unique styles, you can check out my website, brianalmata.com, for my packs and presets. It's a great way to support the channel, as well as level up your music video editing game. If you're interested in this effect, sit back, relax, click like, and let's get into the video. Before we get into the video, if you guys do want a full video breakdown of like all the clone effects that I know how to do, kind of like a master class video all in one video something that you would be able to watch from start to finish and know how to do about just about any clone effect that you've seen on youtube in music videos go ahead and click like if we get 750 likes on this video i'll go ahead and do an all-in-one video on clones it'll probably be a pretty long one but you will leave that video knowing how to do basically every single clone effect there is all right so now that we're in after effects i just want to go ahead and show you the effect we're going to be going over super fire it's just this slide down transition you can see here i did it with this whole freeze frame but then you can also see that it's done in the music video itself with a cut out of them. Both are generally the same concepts. So we're just going to be going over and touching on the freeze frame itself. So step one, what you're going to want to do is just have two clips that you want to transition between. You can see here, there's a cut between these two clips and you want to go the frame before the transition cuts. So you can go right where it splits, go back one frame, click on the clip, the first clip over here, control D or duplicate that layer, right click on it, go to time and then go to freeze frame. What that's gonna do is just make a still image of the clip. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually drag it all the way to the top here and we can name this freeze frame to make it a little bit easier to follow, freeze frame. And then we could just name this one one and this one two to represent clip one and clip two. And then you just want to drag this clip out just like about 10 frames right now. We'll cut it in a second. And what you can do is on that one frame to the left where we duplicated it, go to that top freeze frame layer and click control shift D or split it and delete that first part. So now you can see if we play, it's going to have a freeze frame for a while. And that's exactly what we want. Now all we have to do is animate this freeze frame here. So what I'm going to do is open up the transform options before we do anything, since we do want it to kind of fall down like a card and kind of have it rotate weird. What we're going to do is go up here to the, to the pan behind anchor tool. And if you click the anchor point, which is in the dead center right now, and you bring it to where you kind of want it to fall from. So if you bring it to this corner, I'll give you an example really quickly. As soon as we get it over here, if you change the rotation, now it's going to rotate from that spot, as opposed to before, if we went to rotate it, it would rotate from the center. So just depending on where you want it to rotate from, you can drag it to any corner. You can drag it to the left you can see how all these different ones are going to give you different results. So just keep that in mind when you're doing it. I'm going to go ahead and drag it to the bottom left, but that's not exactly where you have to have it. That's just what I'm going to do for the video. After that, you can keyframe the position and the rotation. Those are the primary two ones that you want to keyframe. You can do scale, you can do opacity, but these are the two that we're going to be focusing on. And then let's go 10 frames to the right. So if you hold shift and go to the next frame here in the preview option, it's going to go 10 frames. And let's go ahead and cut it there. And then all we have to do is really just keyframe I like to keep from the rotation first so you can kind of see where you're going. Let's go ahead and have it fall like that much. And then also the position, we're gonna have to drag it all the way off the frame. And now when you go ahead and play that, you can see it's not exactly what we want, right? It's It looks kind of bad. So first off, what you wanna do is add motion blur. This is gonna level it up a lot already. Now you can see it looks better already. It's still not what we want, but it is looking a little bit better. If your motion blur isn't looking how mine is, you can go up to composition, composition settings, then go to advanced. And the shutter angle is basically dependent on how much motion blur you're gonna get. 180 is typically the most realistic looking and the best in my opinion. But if you go higher, there's gonna be more motion blur. And if you go lower, there's gonna be less. And then the next step is to add easy ease to the keyframes. So you can do that by right clicking on the keyframes, going to keyframe assistant and then easy ease or clicking F9 on your keyboard to save time. And now you can see it is a little bit smoother of a transition. But what I want to happen in this transition is have a Kind of rotate first and then fall down so to do that i'm going to highlight both of these keyframes go to the graph editor this is a little bit intimidating if you haven't used the graph editor before but trust me it is pretty easy to use so don't worry i will explain basically this graph is showing the motion it starts off slow and it slowly gets faster and most of the movement in the keyframes happens right at the middle part for the position so basically the falling action and we want that to kind of start off slower and then slowly get faster throughout. So to do that, I'm gonna drag it this way, and it's basically gonna start off really slow. Now you can see it's not gonna fall right away, but most of the falling is gonna happen right in these few frames because the velocity is the highest. And then let's go ahead and go out of the graph editor. So just click that again. And if you wanted it to kind of duplicate, kind of how these freeze frames happen here, basically all you have to do is click Control D on that layer you just created. And then I would recommend 
going, I don't know, two, three frames, whatever to the right. And then just basically make sure you're not selected on that anchor point tool anymore. Go to your selection tool and then drag that to the right. So now you can see it falls down and then there's another one that follows right after. You can go ahead and change the keyframes to make them go down at different velocities, or you could go ahead and keep them the same. It doesn't really matter too much. You can see now they fall apart. If you wanted them to happen closer together, you would just move it to the left. And if you wanted it to happen further apart, you'd move it to the right. So you can see here, that does look pretty weird, but you can see the example of what it would happen. And maybe you want it to happen to a different freeze frame. So what you could do is if I go ahead and delete that layer and control D this background layer. So this background number two, it's now making a number three, right click, go to time and then freeze frame, click on that. And then if you just go ahead and copy and paste the transform options. So the position and rotation options and paste that onto this layer. You can now see if you click U to open up the keyframes, you can now see it will take a freeze frame of that as well. And then make sure to turn on the motion blur as well. And just a side note, if you don't see your motion blur popping up, make sure to enable motion blur for all layers with motion blur switch set up here in the top. And if you're not seeing the motion blur pop up here, just go to toggle switches and modes until you see the option pop up. So now you can see it happens a little bit later. And the nice thing is once you do this transition once, basically it's a preset, right? So you can do this throughout the music video pretty easily without actually doing much extra work. All you have to really do is create a freeze frame and then you can just copy and paste that transition. You know, you can slowly change the keyframes or whatever, or you can keep them the same. It's honestly a really quick transition that not many people are gonna even pick up on, but it does add that little extra something to your videos. And then let me go ahead and turn off that layer that we just did. If you guys wanted to do something like this masked out, all you'd have to do is either use the rotoscope tool or the pen tool to mask out your layer. And then you would just do the exact same thing on a freeze frame layer. You can see, you can see it's just a still image and you would just pen tool it out and do the exact same thing. And this video is a perfect example of all the clone effects that I was talking about. So if you want to learn how to do any of these clone effects that are done in the ClickUp music video by Fredo Bang, go ahead and let me know in the comments as well as click like. Like I said, if we get to 750 likes in this video, I will do a full clone, everything you need to know breakdown video on all the clone effects that you see in music videos nowadays. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Like always, if you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and check my website, briandelmata.com. I have a bunch of packs and presets on there that are going to save you time while editing, as well as give you a unique look and support the channel at the same time. Be sure to follow me on all social medias. I'll have them linked down below. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.